Perek HaMafkid, Daf Lamed Ches, sponsored Rufu Shlema for God Yitzchak, Ben Kela Zelda. The Mishnah brings a machlokas as to how a custodian should deal with spoiling produce. First opinion the Tanakhama holds that the custodian should not sell them. Second opinion, Rabbi Shem Gamliel holds that the custodian should sell them in the presence of Bezdin. By doing this, the custodian is fulfilling the mitzvah of Hashava Saveda. The Gemara brings two reasons for the opinion of the Tanakhama. The first is Rav Kahana. A person prefers even much less of his own that he toiled to produce. Adam Reitze Bekav Shalom, Second reason is that of Rav Nachman by Yitzchak. Perhaps the owner used them to tithe other products. Sometimes Tevel and the resulting Truma do not have to be together for the purposes of tithing. Rabbi Yochanan qualifies the mission, explains that this is only where they spoil a normal amount. If more, even the Tanakhama agrees the custodian should sell them in front of Bezdin. According to Rav Kahana, it is not common for Pradus to spoil that much and not quickly. In case the owner used it for tithing purposes, the custodian can sell it to a Kohen. However, Rav Nachman by Yitzchak holds it is common to spoil quickly. Perhaps the custodian sold it quickly before the owner used it for tithing, and he would end up eating Tevel, since it was not his when he tithed. The Gemara brings a similar machlokus in a brisa that includes wine that turned into vinegar, oil that turned rancid, and honey that soured. Rancid oil is used by leather workers. Sour honey is used as a salve. Rabbi Meir holds that the custodian should not sell them. The loss of the containers is minimal. The Chachamim hold that they are sold in the presence of the Bezdin. They state that Oselehem Takana, which means to salvage their containers. They Chachamim hold that we, that we are concerned even, even for a minimal loss. Rabbi Yochanan's ruling applies only to quantitative spoilage. However, wine that turned into vinegar, oil that became rancid or honey that soured, Rabbi Yochanan would see no reason to sell them because once it happens, it affects the whole quantity. The Gemara brings a machlokus as to whether the court places a relative on the land of a captive. Everyone holds, they do, if a rumor circulated that the captive died. If there was no rumor, Rav holds, we do not place him in the field, he will deplete it, not knowing if he stands to inherit it or not. Shmuel, on the other hand, holds that we do place him in the field, since even if the captive returns, the relative is compensated as a sharecropper. However, we learn from a verse that even children are not permitted to sell the field. Only putting them in the field for the purposes of work in the field, but not for the purposes of selling it. The Gemara contrasts this law with the law of the Mishnah concerning the custodian selling the spoiling produce. In the case of requiring the custodian to sell spoiling produce, it is to prevent the entire loss of the produce. In the case of the captive's field, it may suffer only a minor loss, and the court is not concerned for that. So according to that, we can't really compare the two cases.